Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair, and this is highly disconcerting. Uh, first of all, I think we need to put it on the record that there are still nine and a half weeks left uh, before the, the summer recess, and we have in the past on other committees on this committee uh, been able to have drafting instructions and write a report and complete it and submit it and table it in the house in significantly less time than that so my concern is that this is offering an unjustified uh, pressure of timeline when one doesn't actually exist uh, second of all, uh, the fact that the parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Defence has brought this forward is also somewhat concerning, disconcerting. She is a representative of the executive branch. The responsibility of the House of Commons Standing Committee is to, in part, hold the executive branch accountable. In something as serious as this, we have to have not only in reality no interference from the executive branch, but even more so have no possible perception of interference by the executive branch. We are talking about the trust and confidence of Canadian Forces personnel and of Canadians in the whole structure of the National Defense Act and our elected representative that is responsible for the Department of National Defense and the military, the Minister of Defense. Once that trust and confidence has been lost and with any possible perception that the executive branch is interfering in our ability to get to the bottom of it, then the very institution of a military and our democratic structure is strongly at risk. So I wanted to make sure that, that I put that forward. Thirdly, I have no one who has asked to conclude this study. In fact, I have been overwhelmed by the number of emails, phone calls, texts to my office, to me personally providing additional information, providing support, providing feedback on just how critical this study is and just how overdue this is. It's an incident that has simply arisen recently. It is not a one-off. It is, unfortunately, the more we do the study, a systematic pattern of behavior at the very highest levels, possibly even including the Privy Council, the Prime Minister's office, the Prime Minister himself, the Minister of National Defense. So no, people do not feel that we have got to the bottom of this, done our legislative responsibility as elected representatives of Canadians, to figure out exactly how this went wrong and what needs to be done to re-establish the trust and confidence in the Canadian Armed Forces. We still have no answer on why a CDS with outstanding, unresolved sexual allegations, allegations of sexual misconduct was allowed to continue in his position for an additional three years. The fact that there was any possibility that those allegations were true and no one, not at the highest level, determined the need to investigate or get to the bottom of it and ensure that they weren't true is highly disconcerting. And we still have no accountability from the minister or anyone else that it was in fact their responsibility to ensure that a chief of the defense staff or any senior military personnel was allowed to continue with unresolved allegations of any kind, not the least of which abuse of power or sexual misconduct. And lastly, but just as importantly, how are we going to ensure that the process continues after our study is complete and that those people who 
are either complicit through their silence or through their actions are held accountable. This is not only about fixing processes and procedures, not only about holding those who should have done something accountable, it's also about ensuring that those who may have done things that were not honorable and beyond reproach are held accountable in the future. So there is still a significant amount of serious inquiry that we as elected representatives must look into. And that's why we cannot, must not, we owe it to the citizens and the members of the Canadian Forces. I was a woman in the military and I did not feel that I was able to serve equally in some circumstances. And that was over 30 years ago. We must, this is our time to do something about it. We can't afford not to. And this study is a critical piece in moving the country and the Canadian Armed Forces forward.